So this video is to explain how we analyze a given polynomial function. So whether we are given the graph or given the function, um, we need to ensure that we include all these critical points. Critical points are always going to include the zeros. So you can see here we have four of them. Zeros again are where the function crosses the x-axis. And we also have here a relative max another relative max and a relative min. And we would also want to include the y-intercept. In this case, the y-intercept is at the origin, so we already have that graphed. It's a y-intercept and an x-intercept. So we're going to begin by first stating the domain and the range. Remember, just like we talked about today, the domain are all is the set of all possible x values. So if your graph continues left and right forever, which it does, Remember here that even though the graph is heading down, it is heading down and right forever and down and left forever, meaning our domain would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Next, our range um, we should consider. So remember, range is the set of all possible y values on your function. So you're supposed to think, does my graph go up and down forever? And it does it does go down forever but it doesn't go up forever so remember you always want to state it in terms of your lowest y to your highest y well our lowest y since it goes down forever we would use negative infinity but as we move up our function we can see that the highest y value we have is from this point right here so our highest y is four so that means for our range we'll state it as negative infinity two for inclusive. Remember we use a bracket for inclusive. Let's go ahead and state our end behavior since we already know that. Remember that when both ends go down or both ends go up we know it's an even degreed polynomial. We can actually trace this to determine what the most likely uh, polynomial function is. One, two, three, four. So it's at least a fourth degree polynomial if not more. So, assuming this is fourth degree polynomial, meaning it's even, we can both see we can see that both ends go down. Then we know um, that we have an even degreed function with a negative leading coefficient. But remember, I also taught you to think about end behavior in terms of um, if all the points in the quadrant where this down arrow is, if all these points are negative negative, that will help us write our end behavior. So we can come over here to end behavior and state that as x approaches negative infinity f of x also approaches negative infinity I don't know why I wrote a parenthesis, don't worry about that f of x approaches negative infinity similarly over here we've got a positive x and negative y's in a, all in this quadrant so positive negative and that will help us so that means as x is approaching positive infinity f of x is approaching negative. So we'll come over here and write our func write our end behavior in functional language. As x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. That indicates that both ends go down. So down, down. Okay? The next thing we want to define is our relative max points and our relative mins. So similar to quadratic functions that have max and min at a vertex, if we if say if that which kind of looks like a parabola is a um, max point, if that was a vertex, we would call it a max point because it's the highest point. Um, when we have a polynomial function, they don't always have um, absolute maximum minimum values. So if it's in this case, um, if we have a turning point in our graph, we call that a relative maximum. Now what's important to remember, and I'd like for you to make sure you remember this, is that a relative max or a relative min, and so I'll, I'll shorten it as R max and R min, should be written as your Y coordinate at your X coordinate. The Y telling us how high something is and the X telling us where it is. So you can think about those coordinates as always being, well where is something at, that's your X value, and what is our max or min? That's your y. So if I ask for a relative max, or if I'm asking you in an application, what is the max height? We'd always want to use 
the y coordinate. So for our relative max, I always analyze my graph, by the way, starting left to right. So let's pick up this relative max here on the left. And we would simply state it as 4 at negative 4. That's it. 4 at negative 4. We do have another one over here on the right side. So we will state that as 3 at 2. Now we're going to move down and determine our relative min. We can see the relative min is where we have a turning point in the graph where it changes from decreasing to increasing. So we again will state this as our y at x, so negative 3 at negative 1. The next thing I want to talk about is making sure we list when we analyze our characteristics of our polynomial function are the zeros. And you can either write them as order pairs or simply state that x is equal to these values. So we want to look here along our x-axis and use the x values. So from left to right we have negative 6, negative 2, 0, and positive 3. So the next things we're going to talk about are going to um, be helpful if we highlight on our graph. So what I want to mention next now are the intervals of increase. So I'll use INC to abbreviate, meaning we want to look at where from left to right, if we were to trace this, where, remember where is our x, where is our graph increasing. So what I want to do first is get a highlighter and I'm going to highlight intervals the color that I'm going to label it on my graph. So I'm highlighting this yellow and what I want you to think about is if you put your finger here on this graph and traced it you would increase then decrease then increase then decrease. So I'm going to put an up arrow beside the part on the graph that increases so there and also here is increasing. So I am want you to be really particular about paying attention and always using your X's. A very common mistake students make is they think that since we're talking about going up and down that they want to use Y values, but always use your X's. What I also want you to keep in mind is that you, as you move on this graph from left to right, you're actually coming from an X value of negative infinity. So I want you to label here negative infinity on the end of your function. That has nothing to do with the y's going down. It has everything to do with the graph coming in from negative infinity. Likewise, when we're on the opposite side of our graph, it is going down, but it is decreasing as x gets larger. So what I want you to put at the end of this one is positive infinity. So again, don't think of it going down as, well, how come she's labeling it positive? It's positive because our x values are increasing as we continue to go down on our graph. So when we state our intervals of increase, we want to look at our x values. So notice I have my finger here pointing at negative infinity up to negative 4, again using the x value. So I will write these as intervals just like we did domain and range. So our first interval is negative infinity to negative 4. We also have another part on our graph where it is increasing. It's increasing from here to here. Well, these x values are negative 1 and 2. So I'll do union to indicate that we have another interval. And it is again increasing here using our x's from negative 1 to 2. And that's all for increasing intervals. The next thing we need to find is our intervals of decrease. So I'll use DEC to abbreviate. Again, using our X's. So I'm going to pick up a different color uh, highlighter here, and I'm going to highlight the intervals here of decrease. And I'm going to put arrows on my graph where my function is decreasing. So I'm going to label, uh, I'm going to define my intervals by again looking at the x coordinates of the points. So negative 4 to negative 1, our graph is decreasing. So that's my interval from negative 4 to negative 1. Because I have a second interval where my graph decreases, I'm going to use the union symbol again and again use my x values. And see, now you can see where it comes in real helpful to go ahead and label the negative and positive infinity because you don't have to think, well, what do I put? 
So negative 2 to infinity. Notice I am not using those y's. Very common mistake students make, but I hope you won't make that. All right, next we are going to, and we're almost done, we're going to do our intervals where our graph is positive. So the notation that you need to get used to seeing is intervals or interval where f of x, meaning your function, is greater than zero. Well, if you think about that, all that means is that anything greater than zero is positive. So this just means where is our function positive. Remember f of x you can also think of as y. So I want you to think where are my y's positive? Well, if you think about where your y's are positive, they're above the x-axis. So let's put up here positive y's or above the x-axis. Okay? So I'm going to take my highlighter now and I think we'll do pink on top so it'll match up with what we did in class. Let's see. So I'm going to highlight where my graph is above the x-axis in pink. Okay? I'm going to highlight down here in pink intervals where f of x is greater than zero. And we want to state, similar to how we did our intervals of increase and decrease, continuing to use our x's. But now, we're going to have to, instead of using our relative max and min points, we need to use our zeros. So we can see that our graph stays positive in between an x value of negative 6 and an x value of negative 2. So that will define our interval from negative 6 to negative 2. Notice, by the way, we never use brackets with intervals, only parentheses. Brackets are only reserved for domain or range. In addition to negative 6, negative 2, if we move over here to this part of the graph, we can see that from 0, 0 to 3, 0, the graph is above the x-axis. So our interval is, again, from this x to that x, so from 0 to 3. So just even though you see this funky notation, don't think it's hard. Just think, where is my graph above the x-axis? Because greater than zero means positive. Okay? So you can probably almost guess what's next. And the last thing we need to do is define our intervals where f of x is less than zero. Well, it's just going to be the opposite of what we have here. f of x, again, being y, if a number is less than zero, it's negative. So that would be where y values on our graph are negative or below the x-axis. Okay, so on our graph, actually I'll highlight this in blue and then it will correspond to where we color on blue on our graph, which will be below the x-axis. So I'm going to color this blue, that part blue, and this blue. Now again, just don't forget to continue to use your x values from these coordinates. So see again where this comes in um, helpful that we use our negative and positive infinity because these are our x values. So it is below the axis from negative infinity up to negative 2. So negative infinity to negative 2. Union, it's below the axis from negative 2 to 0, and it is also below the axis from x-axis from 3 to positive infinity. And now we have finished analyzing this quartic polynomial. Remember 1, 2, 3, 4 looks like a quartic polynomial. And there we go. Hope that helps.